Which of the following security controls is designed to prevent unauthorized access to a network by identifying and verifying the identity of users and devices? Is it A, firewall? Is it B, intrusion detection system or IDS? Is it C, authentication? Is it D, antivirus? Or is it E, encryption? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is C, authentication. Authentication is a process of verifying the identity of users of de or devices trying to access a network. It ensures that only authorized individuals or systems gain access. Examples of authentication methods include passwords, biometrics, like fingerprint or facial recognition, and smart cards. And for the incorrect answers, firewalls are designed to filter network traffic but do not perform user or device authentication. Intrusion detection, detection systems or IDS detects and alerts on suspicious activities but does not authenticate users. Antivirus software is used to detect and remove malware, not for user authentication. And encryption is used to protect data in transit or at rest but does not perform user authentication. And for the next question for exam, question number two. And the question states, which of the following encryption algorithms is considered the most secure for protecting sensitive data? Is it A, WEP? Is it B, AES? Is it C, DES? Is it D, SSL? Or is it E, MD5? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, AES, or Advanced Encryption Standard. AES is widely recognized as the most secure encryption algorithm for protecting se sensitive data. It uses strong symmetric encryption, making it extremely difficult for unauthorized parties to decrypt data without the proper key. And for the incorrect answers, WEP, or Wired Equivalent Privacy, is an outdated and insecure e encryption algorithm vulnerable to attacks. DES, or Data Encryption Standard, is outdated and has known vulnerabilities, making it less secure than AES. SSL, or Secure Sockets Layer, is a protocol for uh, securing data in transit, not an encryption algorithm. And MD5 is a hashing algorithm, not an encryption algorithm, and has known vulnerabilities. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, what is the primary purpose of a VPN or virtual private network? Is it A, to hide the identity of the user? Is it B, to provide secure remote access to a private network? Is it C, to block all incoming network traffic? Or is it D, to enhance website performance? You can have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, to provide secure remote access to a private network. A VPN allows users to securely connect to a private network over the internet, ensuring data confidentiality and integrity. It is commonly used for remote access and connecting branch offices. And for the incorrect answer, to hide the identity of the user. While a VPN can mask a user's IP address, its primary purpose is not to hide identity, but to secure connections. To block all incoming network traffic, this is not the primary purpose of a VPN. It's more related to firewall functionality and to enhance website performance. VPNs are not designed to improve website performance. They focus on security and privacy. And for the next question for exam, question number four. And the question states, which of the following best describes a phishing attack? Is it A, gaining unauthorized access to a system by exploiting a software vulnerability? Is it B, sending deceptive emails or messages to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information? Is it C, in intercepting and decoding encrypted data transmitted over a network? Or is it D, launching a flood of traffic to overwhelm a network or website? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, sending deceptive emails or messages to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information. Physic phishing is a social engineering attack where attackers use deceptive emails or messages to trick individuals into disclosing sensitive information, such as logging credentials or financial details. And for the incorrect answers, gaining unauthorized access to a system by exploiting a software vulnerability, this describes a different type of attack, not phishing. Intercepting and decoding encrypted data transmitted over a network, this is related to eavesdropping or decryption attacks, not phishing. And launching a flood of traffic to overwhelm a network or website, this describes a DDoS or distributed denial of service attack, not phishing. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, which of the following protocols is commonly used for secure email communication? Is it A, SMTP? Is it B, HTTP? Is it C, FTP? Is it D, SNMP? Or is it E, SSH? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is E. SSH or Secure Shell. SSH is commonly used for a secure remote access and secure fil file transfer, including secure email communication. It provides encryption and authentication. 
And for the incorrect answers, SMTP is used for sending emails but does not inherently provide encryption or security. HTTP is used for web communication and is not designed for secure email. FTP is used for file transfer but does not provide inherent security features. And SM SNMP is used for network management and monitoring, not for the email communication. And for the next question for exam, question number six. And the question states, which of the following security concepts involves dividing data into smaller segments and applying separate security controls to each segment? Is it A, data masking? Is it B, data classification? Is it C, data segmentation? Is it D, data encryption? Or is it E, data hashing? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, data segmentation. Data segmentation involves dividing data into smaller segments and applying separate security controls to each segment based on its sensitivity. This practice helps protect sensitive data whilst allowing access to less sensitive information. And for the incorrect answer, data masking is the process of hiding parts of sensitive data while retaining its format. It's not about dividing data into segments. Data classification involves labeling data based on its sensitivity but does not necessarily involve uh, segmentation. Data encryption is the process of converting data into secure format to protect it from unauthorized access, but it doesn't inherently involve data segmentation. And data hashing is a technique for creating fixed size irreversible representations of data, not data segmentation. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, which of the following is an example of two-factor authentication, or 2FA? Is it A, a username and a password? Is it B, a fingerprint scan and a smart card? Is it C, a pin and a passphrase? Or is it D, a security token and a security question? And now five seconds. And the correct answer is B, a fingerprint scan and a smart card. Two-factor authent authentication, or 2FA, requires two different authentication factors from the user. In this example, the user needs to provide something they have, like a smart card, and something they are, like a fingerprint scan. And for the incorrect answers, a uh, username and a password, this is an example of single-factor factor authentication, as it only requires one factor. A pin and a passphrase, whilst this involves multiple pieces of information, they both fall under the category category of something you know, making it single factor authentication. And the security token and a security question, this combination may involve something you have, like a security token, and something you know, like a security question, but it's not two distinct factors. And for the next question of our exam, question number eight. And the question states, which security protocol provides secure communication over a wireless network? Is it A, SSL? Is it B, HTTP? Is it C, WEP? Is it D, HTTPS? Or is it E, WPA3? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is E, WPA3, or Wi-Fi Protected Access 3. WPA3 is a security protocol designed to provide secure communication over wireless networks, addressing vulnerabilities found in older protocols like WEP and WPA2. And for the incorrect answer, SSL or Secure Sockets layer is used for securing data in transit over the internet but is not specific to wireless network security. HTTP is a protocol for web communication and does not inherently provide wireless network security. WEP or Wired Equivalent Privacy is an outdated and insecure wireless security protocol and HTTPS is a secure version of HTTP used for web communication not wireless network security. And for the next question of our exam, question number nine. And the question states, which of the following is a common social engineering technique that involves pretending to be someone else again on authorized access? Is it A, phishing? Is it B, spoofing? Is it C, brute force? Or is it D, encryption? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, spoofing. Spoofing is a social engineering technique where an attacker pretends to be someone else or manipulates the source address of communication to get unauthorized access or deceive users. And for the incorrect answers, phishing involves deceiving individuals through deceptive emails or messages, but it doesn't necessarily involve impersonating someone else. Brute force is a method of trying all possible combinations against a password or a key. It's not a impersonation. And encryption is a security technique used to protect data, not a uh, social engineering technique. And for the last question for exam, question number 10. And the question states, in the context of network security, what is the primary purpose of a firewall? Is it A, to encrypt data in transit? Is it B, to block all incoming network traffic? Is it C, to monitor network traffic for suspicious activities? Or is it D, to filter and control network traffic based on defined rules? You now have five seconds.
And the correct answer is D, to filter and control network traffic based on defined rules. Firewalls are designed to filter and control network traffic based on predefined rules and policies, allowing or blocking traffic based on security requirements. And for the incorrect answers to encrypt data in transit, while some firewalls may provide encryption features, encryption is not their primary purpose. To block all incoming network traffic, firewalls are not designed to block all, coming, all incoming network traffic, but to filter and allow traffic based on rules. And to monitor network traffic for suspicious activities, this describes the role of an intrusion detection system or an IDS rather than a firewall. Ladies and gents, if you'd like to further support this channel, make sure to check my Udemy Instructor channel where I've posted a number of CompTIA exams. The exams consist of 270 questions each and are presented in greater detail. The link for my Udemy Instructor channel is presented in the description of this video. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time. Peace!